Uh, but at 8.57am on this Friday morning's OGBM, <clears throat> delighted to welcome to the show the sports broadcaster Shabana Hearn. Shabana, how are things? Hi, good morning. Yeah, very well. How are you? Keeping well, keeping well. Sure, it's Friday. We're, we're buzzing here. Um, oh, we're buzzing. <laughs> buzzing for the, for the end of the WSL season. It's uh, fair to say the most exciting WSL season there has been. <laughs> I remember um, it was about maybe 10 years ago the, the trophy had to do the, the U-turn oh, and, and head and head back um, because they don't know where it was going to end up on the final day of the season but yeah I think for where the game is uh, for how things have changed especially over the last couple of years and what's happened since the Euros and getting into a World Cup for me absolutely this is the, the, the best WSL I can remember I've loved every minute of it it's been excellent yeah, it's great to see on the final day like different things up for grabs between title mm-hmm. and relegation and, and even Europe, Europe as well well, uh, although Man City would need a, um, a record win and Arsenal to lose, so that, that one's fairly uh, wrapped up. In terms of the title, Shaban, so Chelsea away to Reading, Manchester United mm-hmm. away to Liverpool. Um, Chelsea win and they win the league. Chelsea draw and they likely win the league because United will have to win by a significant goal margin against Liverpool. Uh, hard to see Emma Hayes, Chelsea dropping points at this po- at this point in time uh, if that happens I'll genuinely eat my foot I mean that that would be very very strange if, if Reading are to beat Chelsea at the end of the season but then you know they're clawing their way back they know that it depends on Leicester's result as well um, I, I don't see it ending any other way unfortunately it looks like Reading are set to, to crash out of the WSL I don't see how Chelsea do not beat them. You know, Reading have been poor uh, all season. There's a lot going on there at the club. I believe there's a lot of people losing their jobs. There's a lot of change. It's been a tough old time for them. Um, and Emma Hayes has Chelsea come into themselves that little bit more, you know, towards this, end, this stage of the season. They are going all the way for the win and I think they'll do it in style comfortably over Reading at the weekend. It's funny watching some of the, the press conferences and the build-up to this weekend and, and you get the sense that there are mind games being utilised a little bit by both Emma Hayes and, and Mark Skinner. Um, Emma Hayes and Chelsea have been written off all season but I'm not sure who's been who's been really writing off Chelsea have they? Yeah. I haven't heard anybody write off Chelsea I mean <laughs> do that at your peril I mean uh, yeah perhaps a little bit of mind games going on I think everybody's been so impressed with Manchester United and have given Mark Mark Skinner flowers for that and the mm. job that he's done he, he deserves the credit you know for the job that he's done this season we'll see how it goes next season if he loses Alessio Russo the, the rumour is Unabaje she's off to Barcelona going back home it'll be a different side for next season but they've achieved a lot they've had a trip out to Wembley they're we're top of the table for the majority of the season and they've made Champions League football so I think there's a huge amount of credit to Mark Skinner also the fact uh, maybe that's it maybe it's the fact that Emma Hayes has been the best for so long and unbeatable and there's been a number of teams this season just around it and, and causing a bit of a problem and taking silverware um, for me that's that's just a testament to how the league is going um, but you know I, I certainly didn't write off Chelsea did I? maybe I did maybe I did <laughs> at the oh well sorry Emma <laughs> Why didn't the men's team give her the job over Lampard altogether? Oh my God, stop. I've said this so many times. There's one thing that I would like to happen in my lifetime. There's a number of things, but one of them would be to see Emma Hayes or Serena Wiegmann or another manager of high calibre take a job in the men's game or even get given that opportunity. And I have this debate so often with people that I work with here and and it's like, well, it's just, they would have to go and get experience working with the men somewhere. And I go, why? And they're like, because men are bigger and stronger. And I'm like, aha. Uh-huh. And what about the backroom staff that study all of that, who are with them on that journey? I think the manager has a point to prove when it comes to managing. Um, and, and we've had this debate on and off. And I actually think it'd be incredible one day to see Emma Hayes move to... Well, maybe not. I want to keep her in the WSL as well, but I think she could do that job. She could manage England all day long. Would she all like um? Would she like a job like that? Because like we saw in Ireland, like Lisa Fallon um, getting very, very high prominent roles at Galway United and Cork City and so forth. Not quite the manager's job, but like not far off to be fair. So mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not like a million miles off. But um, mm-hmm. it will say like with the success that Emma has had, where to next? Well, that's it. I mean, I guess it would be abroad you know it would it be abroad would it be going to manage another team a champions league threat inside she has a little boy you know who's probably just starting school at this moment in time so she has a lot to consider there however she has been asked these questions before and she says why would i leave chelsea you know uh, we are the best football club but we have won a lot i think she's obviously got her eyes on the prize of the champions league and maybe if she can take that off her list maybe the next step would be to go to men's football but i think she's certainly happy with where she is and she doesn't feel to go to men's it's better and and i love her her approach on that i guess for me i want to see 
see one day knowing that you know men's the men's game will welcome women in there as well because we see male coaches all the time you know it's completely mm. normal and women's football Hope Powell's just gone to work with um, is it under England uh, uh, under 19s for England mm. that'll be interesting to see how that transpires but Emma Hayes I think could do a job v- Vigman could do a job any day of the week in the, in the men's game yeah, we just Emma. haven't seen it have we so nobody knows what to expect or we don't give the opportunity because we haven't seen it yet if you can't see it you can't be it until that changes well there's going to have to be somebody to do it first right yeah 100% and uh, remember Emma Hayes being linked to Wimbledon a couple of years ago and, and she mm. refused those offers she I think at the time said she'd never take a lower team which yeah. I mean is fair from, yeah. from her perspective considering what she's achieved um, mm. I think you mentioned Ona Battier there she was on the Koi gig pod with, with herself and off the ball this week um, not giving too much away about her future but it appears Shaban that she's off to Barcelona that is a bit of a blow considering Mark Skinner and Manchester Editor are I guess trying to push on next season even further but but that's a that's a blow if she departs to Barca Oh yeah, because she is, she's gravy. I mean, she's absolutely brilliant um, and has had a brilliant season and it's been key to where they've been this season. Um, It's my understanding that she has agreed personal terms with Barcelona, um, but nothing has been signed as of yet. Um, But I also believe that a number of WSL clubs could be interested in it as well. Um, Would would it be the case that she stays here uh, and we get a bit of a shock when it comes to to the summer transfer window uh, from what I understand she has agreed those personal terms but anything's possible especially with the WSL just now we know the money's getting put into it now we know things have changed at Arsenal with Rafa Souza departure as well perhaps they could come in I, I, I wouldn't quite write it off out, out of this country and out of this league yet um, uh, Rusha as well Rusha Little John of course leaving, uh, leaving Aston Villa I know she announced it on your own YouTube channel as well uh, so a sad moment for, for her but I guess even listen to her comments as well she has very firmly and I focused on, on the World Cup and even in recent weeks you know the the fear of getting injured for any player at this point yeah. is so high that, that you just can't take that risk and clearly that's on Rusha's mind mm, absolutely I mean Rusha's had more clubs than Tiger Woods. You know, <laughs> she she has frequented this league for a long time and has been around for for quite some time. And we're turning 33 in the summer. And she's aware that in her when Rusha's fit, she's like, I'm the fittest. You know, I, I'm I'm right up there. But when my body doesn't let me do it, it's so frustrating. All footballers, all, all athletes can relate to that. Um, and she when she knew that she wasn't getting re-signed by Villa. She had a conversation with Vera and said, look, I don't want to jeopardise anything. You know, she's got, she's made a glass at this moment in time. She wants to be at the World Cup. She wants to represent Ireland. She's so focused on that. She, she thinks, well, if you put your body on the line at Aston Villa um, and, you know, there's a, a niggle and an injury or a knock and that puts her out of Vera's Vera Pau squad, then, then that would be a huge issue for her. So I think it's quite a mature decision to make. And I think that's the thing. We'll talk about the number of players depart depart in their clubs in a second, but th- there's a senior experienced level of, of players that are now being let go. Mm. And Rusha will be one of them. And I get it. She's turning 33. They're probably looking for 23 year olds. Um, she, she's had her fun. You know, she's had her run at these clubs. And I think, yeah, go for it. You know, focus, work with Vera, work with the Ireland squad, uh, work with the, the management and the staff there and make sure your body's the best it can be for getting to that World Cup and, and don't jeopardise that. It hurts. I mean, I, I think I hurt for her more than she hurts. She's quite mature about it. She goes, this is football, you know, um, and, you know, I've not been re-signed and, and that's the way it goes. I'm okay with it. For me, I think it's just more like, oh, you know, mm. what does that mean? What's next? And at this age, it's tough. It's tough, right, to get another club. Yeah, for sure. And uh, look, I guess, look, we, you don't know how often World Cups come around certainly towards the late, t- latter end of your career so you've got to look after yourself yeah. and, and, and jump on that opportunity when you get it you mentioned the number of players Shaban leaving clubs I guess from an Irish perspective yesterday we were watching the names come in Megan uh, Connolly and Megan Walsh leaving Brighton Megan Campbell to leave in Liverpool so it's a Megan ma- mass, yeah. Yeah, mass Megan yeah. exit magic of Megan yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I, I actually am very surprised uh, Megan Connolly um, and Megan Campbell because um, they've been part of those sides for well Liverpool and Brighton for quite some time. Going through the list of players who have left Brighton or have been released from Brighton, Megan Connolly, Megan Walsh, uh, Victoria Williams, Dan Carter, Kayleigh Green. The experience is that's four that's four hundred appearances between them. Mm. You know, all, all, all kind of released from their duties. Players who have been at that club for quite some time. Victoria Williams, I won't look at Brighton the same way. You know, I saw her last night in award ceremony and I thought, wow, like again, there's the, the, it's just that senior age. I don't know if a number of clubs now are looking and going, okay, we want to explore new opportunities. We've got access now to the younger players coming through. Is 
there a longevity thing? Are they looking at contracts differently? Um, and I do think a number of senior players are over the age of C26 will be will be threatened if they're out of the contracts uh, this time of the year. Yeah, it's a nervy one for, for a lot of players waiting on contracts and, and decisions and, and trying to decipher where their, their next move is going to be. There's also a big, um, uh, I guess, a sad moment for football this weekend. Izzy Christensen announcing uh, her retirement, so a bit of a legend with Leon, of course. Um, but with uh, with Everton, her final game is going to be against City at the weekend. She's already won WSL title and FA Cup, two FA WSL Continental Cups as well. Um, not to mention the League and Champions League she won with Leon. So um, a, a sad moment for, for football, but what a, what a servant Izzy Christensen has been. Uh, absolutely I mean an outstanding footballer who's been around and seen it all and been part of that change through the years as well and led by example um, I'm sure she'll get a great send off the thing is about Izzy Christensen here I feel that I'm starting to see her more on the TV as a pundit um, and, and that's the thing there's opportunities now for, for women um, of a senior age you know coming out of football uh, going into coaching roles getting media roles talking on the men's game talking on the women's game hosting um, offering their contributions and, and I think Izzy Christensen will still be a big part of that we're still going to see and hear a lot of her um, and, and she deserves that she's very very good and she deserves to, to get that opportunity now that she's retiring from football That's been a huge thing Siobhan has in recent years mm. the amount of female pundits and um, what's it's the, ridiculous it's Yeah what's, I guess what's the response to, what, <laughs> what's the response been in the in the women's game to that because it, it is a game changer Yeah I mean that's total sarcasm from my part there it's <laughs> when, when, when you go through the comments I'm like oh my goodness people genuinely still have the approach is why is this woman talking about football yeah. get back in the kitchen and I'm like mate what, what is wrong why, do, why don't you get off your laptop maybe yeah um, I know and, and I'm up to date with my ironing and I can still sit here <laughs> talking to you guys about football this morning it's incredible um, but yeah no there, there's been a huge change for that we're seeing it often I, I embrace it any Luca I was at an award ceremony last night the first women's football award ceremony and um, it was Jamie Carricker and Ennio Luco uh, hosting it and I think Ennio's a big part of that she's been part of working on the men's side of football for a long long time but still champions the women's game um, and again it works well together you know it's absolutely perfect for me what was interesting last night we were celebrating women in football and Harry Kane and Declan Rice were there to pick up their men's kind of champion champion of women's football award and everyone in the room got up to take pictures of them. Alessia Russo was sitting in front of me and I was like sneakily trying to take pictures of her and I thought, what are we celebrating here? Like, mm. can we not mm. enjoy this moment? And instead it's like, oh, there's two men who are world beers of football. Let's take more pictures of them and let's give them the, the round of applause of the night. And I was kind of sitting there thinking to myself, should it not be the women that we're mm. celebrating here tonight? That was just my observation coming away with it. But um, yeah, we're seeing that change. Um, Izzy Christensen's one of them more recently. Um, Farrah Williams, for me, was the was the OG at doing that, but she's very much so still invested in the women's game and we see her a lot on BBC with Alex Scott. Um, but yeah, I mean, long may that continue. You know, I, I want to see Rusha, speaking about Rusha, I think she offers so much when she's in that role and I love that she's herself, you know, and she, she can have a bit of crack about it and, and just be completely normal and experienced at the same time and have good fun and I want to see more of that when it comes to, to commentaries and punditry as well. Um, but the women deserve all of that opportunity and and to be there you know just to be there and be part of that why not did you say it was the first of those award ceremonies last night Chaban it first was year. the inaugural yeah women's football awards yeah last took, night took their time getting there didn't they Jesus I know we're 2023 this is fantastic um, <laughs> I mean one of the one of the women I was sitting with last night Vicky Gomerso she works at Sky Sports News you, you, you'll know her and she actually said this is actually outrageous like this is 2023 and we've decided now it's time for a women's football awards and mm. I thought yeah yeah that as well you know that as well but we're there now it is um, it's still a it's still a bit of a hurdle weirdly even though women in football is growing and the the opportunities are there but sometimes it still does still does feel a little bit like it's a man's world mm. a wee bit but that's fine I like men too <laughs> well, the only positive thing, I guess, is that you know, if you if you look at where the WSL and women's football generally, and the way we talk about it, has come in the last five or ten years, uh, you know, even in the next even five, in the ten last years, two years, yeah. And but it's gonna yeah. go, it's gonna exponentially, yeah, keep going up. We the, the challenge we have in Ireland, Shaban, is like to this is just an extension of the men's game, but it's obviously more pronounced. Keep our best women playing in Ireland as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's it. You want to grow the league, don't you? Domestically, you want all those best players in your country representing that league. That is what you want. And it, 
I also feel it with Scotland a little bit as well. Mm. We've seen this shift in Scotland, especially coming into the to the end of the Scottish season, and and the eyes that have come on it, and the interest that have come on it, the, the difference that it makes. You know, um, you guys are doing a great job. You've got Kate McCabe and a number of Irish international stars, like who who are there representing and growing the game, mm. and who are absolutely excellent and involve everybody around them and soak it all up. I've watched that journey. I've watched that rise. So I only see it going one way. You need good people setting by example and leading the way and, and the rest will follow. And I think you will see that change soon. I hope I hope that happens. I got to ask you before you go, what is the origin of your first name? It's the first time I've ever come across <laughs> Shaban. It's like reminds me of like Autobahn, Siobhan. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Do you know what the amount of people last night just could still call me Siobhan and I find myself saying, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah, Shaban. I, I don't know. My mum and dad must have been playing Drunken Scrabble when the name does, to be honest. Um, but uh yeah, no, it's, I want to say it's she, she been, which is a, uh, yeah. she, she oh, been yeah. is an, an Irish it, word. It is. Um, and uh, Siobhan and they went for Shaban but again I've never met another Shaban I'm half Irish I was an Irish dancer for 22 years and of all the competitions I went to never met another Shaban so uh, I'll unique. take it I'm, I'm, I'm the OG what's, the, what's the, the poster in the background there Shaban is that a basketball match? yeah that's Michael basketball. Jordan's last shot for the Bulls uh, um, yes yeah, look at all the gutted faces in the background. It's, uh, you've seen The Last Dance? Oh, um, of course, of course. Yeah, you've seen it, the it, air movie, Siobhan? The, the air movie on the whole haven't thing. Haven't seen it. Haven't yeah, seen it yet. It's, it's, it's a good on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm looking forward to that. My husband actually picked this picture and there's some brilliant sporting events um, where they, what they do is they take the individual and then have the crowd in the background in black and white. There's the brilliant one of Tiger Woods getting that oh, yeah. that, um, that, that shot at the, the Masters and everybody then walking down the, the kind of green behind him. I'd like to get that one next. And then hopefully one of maybe Russia Republic of Ireland oh, in the yeah. summer you know that would be great her, her lift in the World <laughs> Cup in colour and everyone else in the background in, in, in black and white I know. we can dream but listen uh, <laughs> Shaban brilliant stuff as always always enjoy the chats thanks many for hopping on Thanks for having me. Have a good Friday and a good weekend. You too, you too. Football broadcaster, Shabana Hearn there. She puts uh, you in good form. Just uh, ah, yeah. infectious, uh, gets you in the mood for the weekend. 100%. A great um, Friday guest. 